It took me almost four months to make my decision on which college to attend. I received hundreds of comments from you guys on your opinions on which school I should choose. Most of you were telling me to choose Harvard, Stanford, or MIT. In this video, I'm going to break down my thought process behind how I made my decision. I'm going to give my thinking in three main areas, culture, academics, and careers. Let's start out with section number one, culture. All of these schools have their own culture, but that being said, which one's the best? Well, the short answer is that there is no best culture. It really depends on the student and in which environment they're going to thrive. For MIT, the number one thing I've heard is their work hard, play hard culture. And for that play hard culture, I've heard some pretty crazy things about MIT's Greek life. Apparently, over 50% of MIT undergraduate men are in a fraternity. Now, that doesn't mean that you won't have have a good time without taking part in Greek life, but it was something to consider. In addition, MIT is known to be pretty nerdy, and I know already there's going to be a ton of comments complaining, Risha, why would you say such a thing? But how many other schools are there that have a dedicated page on their website titled Geek Life? And an official MIT nerd test, and several articles about how nerdy MIT is as a place and about nerd pride. I also spent last summer at MIT at the Research Science Institute for six weeks, and it was a pretty cool place, but I didn't necessarily like their campus in comparison to some of the other schools. At the same time, MIT has been described as a very collaborative environment, which ultimately a lot of people thrive in. But was that the right place for me? On to Harvard. On the collaboration versus competitiveness front, I've actually heard the opposite about Harvard. It's described as a place oftentimes that can be very academically competitive, which again, some students might be able to thrive in. And based on my experience in high school, I think I might be one of those students. But of course, that's just one factor. Another really big thing about Harvard is a lot of people accuse Harvard students of being snobbish and pretentious. But based on discussions I've had with several students, as well as reading I've done online, I basically come to the conclusion that, you know, every college campus is going to have some organizations or some elite types of clubs. And Harvard is one of those campuses, but it doesn't mean that all the students there are going to be snobbish and pretentious. Furthermore, I've actually heard that because Harvard doesn't have frats and the whole Greek life experience, it's actually, there's actually less of a pressure to be involved in these elite social clubs. Finally, let's look at Stanford and Stanford being on the completely opposite coast has some different weather than we might see at MIT and Harvard. It's also not a college town. Palo Alto is expensive and, you know, to get to the downtown area, you actually have to bike or Uber there from Stanford. And so I've heard that people don't tend to leave Stanford campus as often as you would at MIT and Harvard, because that's just really integrated right into the city. People also complain that because of that, Stanford doesn't feel like a college town. It's like a bubble that's isolated. And that was something that was a concern for me. All the times that I visited Boston and the Cambridge area, you know, I've always felt like, hey, there's literally 200,000 students there. There's students everywhere walking. And I just felt like it was a very, you know, well integrated campus in the surrounding city, which is something that I was really looking forward to. That was a major grab for me. And I'm curious to see what you guys think before we get into part two. So pause the video now and leave a comment down below on your thoughts. That being said, let's get into part two, which is about academics. Now, I know there's going to be people who disagree with me on this, but I've heard that MIT is a very difficult school. It's very rigorous academically. You know, there's always difficult weed out courses like OCHEM that are going to be present at a bunch of schools. But MIT is especially known for making those courses extremely difficult. MIT has even proven to be slightly grade deflationary for some students. Now, having a rigorous school isn't a bad thing, and I know a ton of students who would actually love that, but balancing that on top of research and, you know, my things like this, like my YouTube channel, I'd prefer to have a little bit more leeway where I'm not just doing homework all the time for all my rigorous courses. Now onto Harvard. Now, this might not be the case for every course in the world, 
But I have heard that Harvard is the opposite, where it is sort of grade inflationary. And there's students who have cross enrolled at MIT and Harvard, and they report that the Harvard courses are simply easier. Not necessarily less in terms of course difficulty, but just less rigorous in terms of the homework you're given and the grades that you're given. Furthermore, Harvard is known to be an excellent school for pre-meds. There's a huge focus on the life sciences, especially in disciplines that I'm interested in, like neuroscience. And there's a lot of research opportunities, making it a great choice. Finally, Stanford. One of the unique things about Stanford is it has this quarter system, which I heard some people really like it and some people don't like it as much. One of the drawbacks is that you often don't have breaks at the same time as other schools. And so the amount of times you get to meet with, let's say, childhood friends, high school friends might be a little bit more limited because... Stanford has this different system that a lot of other schools don't have, like Harvard, for instance, is the semester system. In addition, I have heard that Stanford also has this kind of tech CS bubble, less on the finance side of things, but more of startups, entrepreneurship, CS and tech. And a lot of students get sucked into that. And I feel like if that's the main focus of the school, if I'm doing another discipline, I don't really want to have too much of a pulling influence on what I'm doing over here. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, please consider subscribing. There's only a small percentage of you who are actually subscribed, which is kind of crazy because you should totally subscribe so you get notified for amazing new videos like this one and also help me out a ton. So that being said, let's move on to part three, which is careers. Once again, for MIT, I'm simply going to reiterate the CS and finance sphere. You know, I've heard that MIT also has great support for students who will go on to become, you know, researchers and go into academia. But at the same time, there's just this huge bubble that is CS and finance that I've heard so many students talk about. And I've seen some people get sucked into. For Harvard, on the other hand, there are several teaching hospitals directly affiliated with Harvard as well as amazing institutes. One is, for instance, the Broad Institute collaboration between MIT and Harvard, which is really cool. But, you know, Harvard has more of these institutes in the life sciences and more opportunities for me to do amazing research and come up with new innovations. Harvard also has a huge focus on other disciplines, right? There's a huge humanities and social sciences program, which is really strong. I'm not, I'm not saying that MIT doesn't have a humanities program, which I hear sometimes is a sentiment online, because MIT does have that. But just the percentage of students and the focus of 90% you know, of students who may be on the engineering, tech, finance, CS, that sort of thing, you know, I want to be at a school where it's a little bit more even. So you have this diversity of thought, because ultimately, that's what helps drive a lot of creative solutions in the areas of research that I'm interested in. I heard that Harvard is kind of described to have a very well-rounded campus. You have students like me who are in the STEM disciplines who might have, you know, science publications published before we are joining Harvard. We have humanities major majors who have their essays or books already published, which is amazing. And then you have social sciences majors who are, I don't know, getting bills passed in their local state. Finally, Stanford, again, the tech focus of the school, you know, brought me to actually apply for majors like biomedical computation and bioengineering, whereas at Harvard, I applied neuroscience. And so ultimately, I think that tech focus, if I were to join Stanford, I feel like I would get pulled in that bubble. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but as of now, based on what I think would be most fulfilling to me long term and based on the career path that I'm most interested in and the goals that I've set and the values that I have, I just had the vibe that Harvard enables that career path um, much more for me than Stanford. And so in the end, I did choose Harvard, which is why the Stanford pennant thing is gone from up here. I'm sorry, Stanford. All right, so if you're still watching, please consider subscribing. It does help me out a ton and you get notified for new videos. Genuinely press that red button. It takes one second and you won't regret it. Now watch the next video on the screen and I'll see you later.